Hello artists and welcome back to Quick Houdini. This time we're gonna learn how we can render our wireframe in order to get cool renders for our projects, for our breakdowns. So let's stop talking and let's go for it. So let's start, this is the scene. So in this part, I put everything related with crowds. This is test that I did with the sphere just to test that this was working. Then we have the light operator stuff to maybe switch this to Karma and some FBX, some lights, some cameras and the render operator to do the mantra render. So let's start with the crowds. I'm gonna go like kind of fast with crowds because I don't, I don't want to focus with this. I want to focus on the material to create this breakdown effect. So let's start with the first geometry node. Here we have our trooper. We have two different troopers, but I think it's the same, but we're gonna get the idea. So here we have our agent, as you can see. And yeah, we are loading the first FBX and yeah, we are just putting a name. We are just saying that, hey, we're gonna use the locomotion. And yeah, we are marking, we are just checking the convert to in place animation because now this is moving into, into the space. And here in the aging clip, what we have, it's more clips that we load, like this, I call it formal, this idle, this walk, and walk with riffle. But yeah, and it's the same with every, with all of them. We just load as an FBX and then we convert to in place animation because we want it in place and then we're gonna switch back to the locomotion. Basically here we are just adding again this hip bone that is the locomotion node and then we are hitting this apply clip locomotion. So now we can see this, that this is good, okay? It's going to the endless. Good. Then we have our agent layer. The agent layer basically is just to add layers. Maybe we can add a cap, a cape, I don't know, and a different helmet. In this case, we are adding this blaster, the gun. So as you can see, this is pointing to something that it's in the object context. And if we hit this arrow, we're gonna jump up to this section inside the object context, inside the gun uh, geo node. So if we go outside, we can see that this is our stuff. So let's go here. And yeah, basically this is the OBG and this is the transform that I did. One is prepared for the gun walk and the other is for the gun rest. When, when the guy is doing resting stuff, it's two different positions. Then if we continue with the stuff here in the agent prep, this is our agent definition. So I'm following just the shelf tool to make it faster. So basically after this, you can, you can move on to cache your agent. So basically it's like cache on the heap environment. And then remember to hit load from disk. So once it's cache, basically we cache the rig we cache the agent layer, we cache, we cache the sh some shapes, some clips, some stuff that maybe the transform group, we don't have it. This is to do like partial rag pulls, but I don't wanna get inside this. And everything's good. Okay, by default, everything's good. So then we have the agent edit. So here we can check all the animations, like this is the walk with the riffle, but we can check, for example, how is the, the idle? In the agent layer, what we are just doing is pointing the gun. We are just adding a name here and here. So this is gonna be the generic. So it's gonna be guns. And then inside guns, we're gonna have blaster. Then we can have, I don't know, a knife or other stuff. And this is important. We are just telling Houdini, yeah, this is gonna be parent to the left hand bone. Okay, so then our gun can like follow our star our guy much better so after this we have the agent prep which we are not using it so we can bypass it or you can delete it whatever you want so this is our agent so now we what we can do is go to the crowdsource so the crowdsource it's 
like divided into parts. This is the preparation of the crowds and then this is the after the simulation, okay? So I usually work inside the same geometry node, but in this case, because I use the shelf tool, I have it, the top network, I have it here. So inside this part, let's start from the beginning. We have two different crowds because I have some of them that they are gonna be like standing up and other few of them that are gonna walk through the corridor. So those are gonna be the ones that are gonna be like standing up. So here we have an object merge that we're importing our crowd idle from this part, the agent. Those ones. So then here we have the ground of the corridor. And we're gonna do a subdivide because we want more subdivisions in our geometry. And then we're gonna use something that we use for grooming, but we also can use it for crowds, which is the comp. We are comping the normals. Let me activate the normals for you. So all the normals are, point are pointing up. So here we are just painting, remember, with the gizmo, we can paint few normals based on what we want, okay? Here you can like manage the brush and also the strokes, okay? Which is the guides the, that you are drawing. So after this, I just randomly, I keep some points. Not randomly, I think that I keep the ones that are next to the doors, so that's good. And as you can see, the normals are pointing a slightly bit different. That's good because in the crowdsource, where the first input is the agent and the second is the desired points, you can just cut this, but in this case, we want like in a specific points. So if we check this, you will see that the crowds are looking based on the normals, which is good. Also in the crowd source, remember that we have stuff like in the randomize tab to randomize the, the cycle that we have. Maybe we want to add another one, like I don't know, uh, sitting down. But in this case, we have to load in the, our crowd agent and prepare it. And also we can randomize the clip time and we can randomize the scale. So remember that this is important, okay? We can make like, taller and maybe few of them really small, few of them really big, okay? We don't want this. So also we have a merge here because we have other crowds, which are those ones, which is the out walk, okay? So in this part, we're gonna use the same technique. So we're gonna create a grid, and this is gonna be the formation of these four stormtroopers. Maybe they are like more bosses than the other ones. So again, we have this geometry with four points. And also we're gonna comp these normals. We don't want any stuff in the Y axis. We want just these to define a slightly bit the direction. And once we are happy with that, we can delete this geometry by creating the add node and delete geometry, but keep points. And we can recalculate the normals if you want. So if we check the crowd source, we will see that our formation is good. Remember that we can take this and make it like more custom, okay? Whatever you want, okay? And also you can add more divisions, it's gonna be more points, you can do whatever you want. So then if we merge these two crowd sources, you will see that once we have those ones that are the bosses and the other ones that are the soldiers. Good. So if we hit play, good, everything's in place, it's normal after the cache, but they are here, they are working, okay? Which is good. Then we have these agent constraint networks, but do we are not doing any kind of ragdoll it's useless so remember you can bypass if you want so let's go, jump outside and let's see what we have in the crowd scene okay because in the crowd solver remember that now it's time to jump to this part but this as you can see is a dop eo this is just to import the simulation that we are doing in the crowd so sim or the dub network so if we get inside the top network, we will see this big crowd tree, but 
do we are not doing any ragdoll we don't need multi solvers we don't need bullet stuff we just need the crowd solver and do we have constraints and stuff no we don't have this so we can delete that and keep the crowd object so let's leave it like that because it's gonna be fast the result so we don't have to take too much care but the most important stuff is that in each state we have to change this to locomotive because now if we check this we will see that our crowds are moving in good direction let's get so another thing that we add is the pop steer path which basically it's a line that I draw and those guys are following the those line so let's Let's jump outside and let's see this node, the curve. Let's type inside. So perfect. It looks like really complex, right? We have the draw curve and we draw this line. Good. So in the pop steer path, we are just taking this line. And that's all. So those states, the one that is walking rifle, it has a force that is this pop steer path, which is this line that is going to drive our bosses to the to this line that we just created okay and as you can see it's kind of fast because crowds are just points so it's not really like hard calculations because remember we are just doing the calculation for points then we are just copying the geometry and this kind of stuff we can make it more complex but for this example it's more than enough so good, then let's jump into the crowd source because here we are using our .eo which we are importing our crowd team and inside the crowd team we are importing the crowd object. Good. And remember to say import field. Which field? The crowd object. Good. What it is? A geometry. Good. Easy. So good. Then we do a cache. Okay, we are caching this crowd simulation and remember the to hit the load from disk. So then this part is for the materials, okay? We can do materials with the style sheets, but if I explain style sheets, it's gonna be like, like too long tutorial and I don't want to spend time with this. I want to explain you a lot of stuff, but I have to take care of time. I don't want to make you lose time. So basically we are unpacking our crowds because we don't have too much crowds. It's something affordable. So we can separate by namings, Okay, and here we can add the material for each one, which is good. If we merge this and we uh, <laughs> hide the normals, we're gonna, we're gonna have crowds with materials, which is good. Then we have a trail to compute the velocity in order to have like the, um, the V. And also here you have the material network only for crowds, which is good, but let's, go to the important part how we are doing this breakdown uh, material like really fast okay so basically in our sub this sub network it's the um, the environment okay so if we dive inside we ha will have this uh, some fbx stuff with all the parts separated which is really annoying but if we check one part for example the ground we will see that this is having applied uh, material, which is inside materials, and it's called breakdown shading. Hmm. Let's jump to this. So good, we are in the materials inside the preview F set FBX, which remember, we were here, okay? So there is this material network here. So we have this, we will see the material. Of course, we have all the materials of our environment, we don't want this right now. What we want to keep is this, okay? So basically, the way it works, it's a principal shader. You can use a classical shader. You can use the Redshift material. You can use an Arnold standard surface, whatever you want. The most important stuff is that we are gonna input the stuff into the base color. So let's see what we have. First of all, let's start from the beginning. We have two constants. One 
it's the gray. So one is this one, this gray. And the second one, it's the black. So it's the color of the lines. Of course, you can switch this to purple or pink, whatever you want. I prefer black for the breakdowns. And gray, it's something, this kind of gray, it's not bad. Here you have the values. Then we are applying, we are creating the, this note, which is the key of the stuff, the wire pattern. This is gonna create a frequency that we're gonna use as a bias. So the less frequency we put, the bigger are gonna be the squares. The more frequency we put, the smaller are gonna be the squares. So keep in mind. And also we can play with the wire width, okay? So we're using a color mix. So we are telling Houdini, okay, Houdini, we are input you a first material, which is not a material, it's just a color constant. And then we input another constant, which is another color. And then we're telling Houdini, okay, use this wire pattern to make a bias, to make an alpha, to make a mask, okay? So that's why we're gonna see those black lines, for example. Or that's why we're gonna see those great squares, okay? And that's how it works. You can copy this and paste it in your projects, or you can create it from scratch, because as you can see, it's not really difficult. We are just deleting every, uh, all the specular stuff and all the refractions, all the emissions. We don't want this, anything of this. The thing is that here we have our lights. We can render it, oops. We can render it in Mantra, or we can render it using the Karma stuff. So if we get inside our lab lighting operator, here we have our Karma. Remember to switch to Karma. If you don't switch to Karma, this is gonna be your viewport. Oops. Let me switch back to the camera. And, and remember, yes, we have here we have the scene. In the scene here, we are using the color mix. So if we get inside, we'll set this. It's the same stuff or we can just assign a material, which is material mix, okay? And here we have our crowds, okay? Our stormtroopers. Here we are importing the out final crowds, okay? And we're putting some lights and that's all. As you can see, if we switch back to Karma, it's kind of fast, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how it works. And I hope that now we are gonna create really cool, cool breakdowns. Remember to send me your stuff if you, if you find it like useful and you use it for your projects. I would love to see your breakdowns. And of course, um, send me whatever you want. I love to see your, your artworks, your projects, your work in progress stuff. So any, everything, if it's a play blast, if it's a render, if it's whatever, just a static frame. And of course, I want to thank you all these artists that provide these stormtroopers, these environments, these materials, which you have the link in the descriptions to these guys, so you can download the models, you can download whatever you want. So thank you so much and see ya!